Welcome to Just Cook It Radio, where delicious recipes and real cooking lead to amazing dishes. We cook, you listen, it works. With your hosts, Chef Mario Pereca and Bill Alexander. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to Just Cook It right here on the Just Cook It Radio Network. And you can watch the show, JustCookIt.tv. I am Mario Pareke here with Bill Alexander. And Mike Sackley makes his triumphant return to the studio. I'm back. Yeah, we were kind of worried about you. Not many of us can go away for our birthdays. <laughs> uh, yeah, after a long birthday celebration. <laughs> yeah. That's what. That's why I work a double shift. <laughs> and the funny, thing is, ago. the funny thing is, I asked Mike how his birthday weekend was. And uh-huh. he, it's a little foggy. He doesn't him. remember it? Yes. Yeah. So. That's, a, that's a successful birthday weekend, right? <laughs> and uh, his eyes did light up when you pulled out the magic bag this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Alexander's magic bag. Oh, yeah. Speaking of birthdays, actually, today is my brother's birthday. Well, happy birthday. Yeah, he turns 44. <laughs> he looks like he's five years older than me, but I didn't say that. Anyhow, <laughs> um, I understand yours is on Monday. Yes. Getting closer. So, birthday's all the way around here. Yep, it's birthday weekend. Yeah. There you go. So. And it's Easter. Easter. Tomorrow Easter is Easter Sunday. So, did you start dying Craziness. Easter eggs yet? <laughs> No, I don't kill Easter eggs. Yeah, we we, 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 we died them last night, and uh, we have like 36 dozen, it seems like, in my kitchen right now. <laughs> You'll have to, you have weeks ahead of egg salad sandwiches and deviled yeah, eggs. Which now with my new uh, um, affection for mayonnaise, I may be able to eat egg salad there you sandwiches go. for See? the first time. So there you go. We slowly work it in there. It, mm. very you don't like something? You will like it you when like I'm done with you. Yeah. Just in small amounts. You'll just get a little bit at a time. But um, so also, we have so much going on it seems like every week but also with easter being tomorrow and it being easter season and spring finally approaching and the weather starting to cooperate it's also we talked about last week on last week's show national grilled cheese month right and it's also national blt month oh so ooh, a double do- a double dose today so yeah so i thought you know why mess with one or the other when we can just put them together and have Killing fun with both birds with one stone that's there right go. that's so, exciting if you go to justcookit.net which is our website there's all kinds of lovely things on there. And there's also today's recipe which just posted. We're going to do a smoked mozzarella BLT, which is kind of a hybrid between a grilled cheese sandwich and a BLT. So how do you smoke mozzarella? Because every time <laughs> I try to light it, it just melts. Yeah. You smoke, it gives you, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> but, um, so we have some smoked mozzarella here. You can get at the store already smoked. You know everybody's you groaning smoke. at home after yeah, that well, one. Yeah, well, you don't have to we'll glance right <laughs> over that. You don't have to smoke it yourself. And I have some right here which I, but you buy it and it comes in an eight ounce block and we shredded it. This is actually applewood smoked. You can get regular smoked. I chose applewood smoked. So you can even, if you want to give that a taste and a smell, give it a smell. You smell the smoke on it. It smells good. It's not overly smoked. It's smoked on the outside. And it's good. It's a good cheese and it'll go really well with our BLT, with the smokiness of our bacon, and which we have in our pan right now, which we started crisping up before we went on the air. Now, what's interesting is because you used that, I could have swore it was Fontina when I walked in this morning. (laughs) Because that's what, it's, what it look, it's what it looks yeah, like, well, it's, actually. Yeah, it's, it's similar, I, I guess. It's mozzarella. They smoke it. Smoked mozzarella. And uh, our bacon, we're going to use peppered bacon today. Ooh. It's thick cut, so we get the thick cut kind, peppered bacon. And uh, we have a couple other things that we're going to work through and we're going to do. But until when, when, before we get started, you can call us and chat with us if you like. The number is 855-590-0590. Again, 855-590-0590. We're here to talk about anything and everything you'd like to. Yeah, sounds good to me. So... If you want to give us a buzz, please do. And uh, we can. Do you have anything else you want to? No, just basically giving the rundown of the phone numbers and where you can find us online. That uh, this program will be on TV um, later, or actually earlier this week on Tuesday, following the House to Home Show from the Herald Standard. Just following that, and then we're going to be on YouTube with the program, and you can listen uh-huh. to this program live if you're listening to our uh, podcast by uh, going every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Going to yourlocalstation.com and it will bring it up in your phone or on your browser or wherever else you may be able to access the program on the Internet. So. Yeah, and you can call us and be interactive, please. We yeah, don't, we enjoy it. Yeah, we're not mean, usually. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> you should hear us during breaks, but yeah, uh, we're fine. <laughs> no, you shouldn't hear us during breaks. <laughs> but um, one other thing I want to mention before we start cooking here, um, if you, I know it's Easter's tomorrow, but a lot of you make ham for Easter. Yes. Not only does the Big Barn have the best hams, which we've constantly said, but if you go, if you want my 
my ham recipe, you can get it at justcookit.net. And I did. I added some search boxes to the website. Oh, did you really? So now you can search for things. You can just type in ham, and it'll pop up. Or you can go to the big bar, and they're giving away my glazed ham recipe. That's cool. It's on the counter there. So if you want, if you're driving by, if you're going driving on 51, and you and through Periopolis, and you want to stop and grab my recipe, it is free of charge. Yes, please do, and tell them you heard us. <laughs> yeah, stop in and pick up a copy of the recipe. It's right on the counter. Now, my question is, we've talked about the uh, big barns hams, and today is, I mean, the day before Easter. Uh -huh. If I didn't get my ham, am I able to get it today? That's a good question. Can we get the big barn on the line and ask we, him? I think we need to find <laughs> out because I think uh, there would probably be a lot of people. I mean, that... I got my ham, but I pre-ordered it, and I actually picked it up on Thursday. Okay. So, I mean, um, I I don't think they'd want to turn anyone away. Yeah. But you can always call ahead of time and ask. Another thing they have that's great for Easter is kibasi. Their kibasi is oh, awesome. Their kibasi. Yeah, we had we tried that when we did the, the remote from there. Yeah, it was really and good. And they have some. They have really great penny candy. Yes. The old yeah. like old fashioned it's so penny funny candy. That every time we talk about them, that's the last thing you end on is their candy. Oh, their candy's awesome, especially <laughs> for Easter. Because what do you get for Easter? Candy. candy. So I mean, it's great. Especially the old time stuff. I mean, I I don't have the reference that my co-host does, <laughs> but <laughs> but Thanks. I still enjoy it. So I'm gonna. Get I this realize. Bacon so out so how old are you on Monday? On Monday. Yeah. Getting close. To what? Getting close to a big one. They're getting close to thirty. I'm getting close. So I'll, Mon be, I'll be twenty nine on Monday. Twenty nine. I remember 29. <laughs> <laughs> that was like 19 years ago. I remember 29. Yeah, it's getting there. I'm Jeez. getting there. I'm getting old. Yes. I have to settle down soon. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Actually, come time. to think of it, that's when I. That's when uh, my wife and I met when there I was 29. Go. We got married right after, yep. six months after I turned 30. I'm going to have to stop hanging out with Mike Sackley and all the shenanigans. Well, Mike's a big, what, 24? 24. Wow. I still, still young at heart, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Old, old at work, I don't, young at heart. I okay. don't remember when I was 24. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> That's a good thing. That was a, blur. That was a, a blur. long time ago. It's a long time ago, filled with repressed memories. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I don't want to remember it. Trust me. <laughs> so, so the, anyway. first thing, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our... Now, obviously, a BLT, the traditional ingredients, aside from the bacon, lettuce, tomato, is there's usually a mayonnaise of some sort okay. on it. And it's on, you know, either you can do it on really any bread you like. But I, my personal preference or the classic BLT that I think of is on sourdough. Okay. That's just what I think of. I mean, a lot. some people maybe so use white bread. So do you have bread, the sourdough here today? I don't. We instead, you know me, yeah. I went and looked through all the breads that are made fresh at the bakery. And like I, as we state before, I like to go to the local supermarkets. So if you want to make these recipes, it's very easy for you. You don't have to go searching for really hardcore ingredients. Like what you did with the muffaletta that we made. Um, right. For right. Bread. And this is actually the same bread we used for I, the muffaletta, okay. the olive oil bread. There I thought go. that it would go really well with this. Um, we start Lenten season with the bread, and we end it with the bread. <laughs> go, go figure! We go full circle here <laughs> at Just Cook It Radio. But um, another thing I want to mention, too, about... Um, well, we'll get into that when we start making it. I want to talk about the lettuce and the tomato selection and that kind of thing. But okay. As we start, as we make the sandwich, we'll get into that. But the first thing we're going to do is instead of just using mayonnaise on this, we're going to make a, uh, a three grain mustard mayonnaise. Okay. Or a whole grain mustard mayonnaise. So we're going to start with some mayonnaise, obviously, here. And we'll start with that in the bowl. And this is just super simple. I don't want to over, over season this because we have a lot of flavor going on with the peppered bacon. And we're going to actually marinate our tomatoes a little bit. Oh, okay. And uh, the smokiness of the cheese. So we don't want to over do this we just want to give it you know a little bit more of a punch and give it a little extra flavor. right 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 so we've got this is the th the whole grain mustard mayonnaise or okay. mustard whole grain mustard you can see that it's got really pretty coarse grains if you want to take a look at that I can show the camera yeah it's uh it's coarse grain mustard you can use any mustard you like really this is one of my favorites I think it gives it a little more assertive flavor it gives it a little more texture and you know I'm gonna ask that question so are you going to answer it before I ask it, or go ahead ask it? I'll give you the. Is it organic? It is not. Okay. I mean, it, there's really nothing. It's just mustard <laughs> seed and vinegar. So basically, so I mean, hey, and, I'm just making sure. Yeah, well, we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice. Okay, fresh squeezed lemon juice. Hey, did you hear that? Um, the, I was watching the news this week, and they were talking about grocery store prices going up, and we've talked about pork going up and beef going up. But did you know the one thing that's going? Two things are going down. What's that? Peanut butter and coffee. Coffee, which is usually the other the way around. The two staples. Yeah, exactly. I can live on peanut butter and coffee. I can do it without a problem. <laughs> 
especially during the Lent, because on Fridays you can't eat meat. Yeah. Peanut, old, good old faithful peanut butter and jelly doesn't get any easier <laughs> or more delicious than that. I probably ate 20 peanut butter and jellies this Lenten season. Really? Absolutely. And that's what people, they find it so funny. Oh, they, everyone thinks that I eat like a gourmet at home. Right. Like I'm constantly making these complicated things. No. And we've talked about that yeah. before. It's when not I'm, like that. We're on the radio. I, you know, my goal, I don't want to show you how much I can do. I want to give you <laughs> stuff that you can use. Right. So we do things like this where I take the BLT and kind of elevate it a little. But when I'm at home, peanut butter and jelly, grilled cheese sandwiches. Now, I'm going to ask you a question because my problem with the BLT is not making the BLT. The problem is making the bacon because to me it takes too long. Uh Uh-huh. I know a lot of us out there, and, and, I'm, and you're probably going to say it's a no-no, but would microwave the bacon? I don't like it. Okay. I, I really I don't. Do so you, I mean, you do the oven bacon I don't think it gets... When you, yeah, when you when you microwave bacon, I personally don't think it gets crispy enough. Um, I You've just, never seen my bacon. It looks like cardboard <laughs> when it comes out. Yeah, and, and then you have the other end of the spectrum where if you over-microwave yeah. it, it gets super crispy. I like to do it in the oven, personally. And then, um, so like when, we, when I do the bacon for the show... I do it a little differently because I want it to be warm, and we are. And unless I come in an hour early, we, which maybe I should Wait, be more you dedicated. Which kind of do, right? Well, yeah, because I have to set up. There's so much. There's so many working parts to our show. I don't have time to sit and watch bacon cook. So what <laughs> I, I do, do I watch it. Yeah, there won't be any left if Mike watches it. So what I do is I start. I, I do it in the oven at home. Yeah. And I do it until it's about three quarters of the way done, until it's crispy but not completely right. done. And then I take it out and I. Chill it, and then I bring it to the show, and then as I'm setting up, I put it in my pan, and I put it on just low heat, and right. I just let it finish on low, and okay. that's what we have there. So now we have warm, crispy bacon in gotcha. the studio. At home, you can throw it in a 350-degree oven. It's going to take about a half an hour, okay. and then every 15 or after 15 minutes, which would be the halfway point, I'd rotate the pan. 90 degrees okay. and just let it finish. It's it's not hard to do and if you take your pan, you know, it, preferably um, do it on a rack. Put it put it on a rack. Um, you don't have to. I mean, usually what I do is I put aluminum foil down yeah, and that's I put what the I bacon too. on top of the yeah. foil that way I don't have to wash the pan right. when it's done. And then uh, you know, you can even t- save the, uh, the the fat, the bait rendered fat mm-hmm. and make your eggs with it after that, which is something which, we both talked which about. Which is what I do. Eggs, yeah. eggs are another thing I eat a lot of at home. Well, that was the other thing I saw yesterday. Too. Too, that they were talking about eggs. Everybody's uh, white, um, white uh, egg white omelets and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. And they said, but all the nutrients are in the yolk. The protein's in the white. The nutrients are in the yolk. Mm-hmm. Eat the whole darn egg. It's not going to kill yeah. you. Well, usually I compromise. I usually do like two eggs and then also add like three extra whites. Right. I'll do two whole well, eggs. Well, what do you do with the yolk? Well, you can actually buy egg whites. Okay. They're just by themselves. But if I don't, then you can take the yolks. You can do all kinds of things with egg yolks. I mean, you can make custards. You can oh, make, you know, too, you can do all kinds of. Th- it just depends. You just have to be creative. Yeah, just you so can it make, go to waste. You can add it into like if you're making different doughs or like pastas. You can just add them in, and it won't hurt anything. So I mean, you, you just got to get creative, and you can use them for all different. Interesting. Things. Interesting. Yeah. So, so, hey, do you want to take a break? Yeah, really let's quick? take a break real quick. As Mike tries to get <laughs> sit down, Mike. <laughs> so we're not going to take a break because Mike just break. got up. So basically, what we did to get back to our recipe. For, wait, for those of you, you, when you watch it on TV, you can see it. But we're sitting here. We're on one side of the studio. Mike's on the other side <laughs> of the studio. And every time, almost every time, we get ready to go to break, the phone rings. And yeah, he goes, and he gets and he, up and he leaves. Sc- he screens the calls for and us. And then we're unsupervised. Yeah, and we're stuck. And we're, we're here. I mean, yeah. just think what could happen. Well. well we could be on the air all day. All we have to do is lock that lock door. The door. <laughs> you have You're really key. thinking about you it, aren't you? But um, so what we did was we made our dressing for the sandwich, which we took some whole grain mustard, some mayonnaise, and a little lemon juice, uh, whisked it together. It's all ready to go. When we come back from break, we also have our bacon, a peppered bacon, thick cut peppered bacon that we crisped up. It's on a paper towel draining. Yes. When we come back, we're going to start with our tomatoes. We're going to get them marinated, and then I'm going to show you how to get the sandwich started and kind of put it together with the cheese and get it in the pan that way we can get it going and get it working so we can eat in the third segment. Sounds good. Okay. So don't touch that radio dial. More Just Cook It and more National Grilled Cheese Month and National BLT Month coming up right after these messages on the Just Cook It radio network. Phil Giannetti Motors at 656 National Pike East in Brownsville is a proud sponsor of programming on FCTV. Phil Giannetti Motors providing quality vehicles for 45 years. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, give Phil Giannetti a call at 724-785-6800 or stop by their website, philgiannettimotors.com.
Welcome back to the Just Cook It Radio Network and JustCookIt.tv. Yours truly, Bill Alexander, along with Mario Paraka and Mike Sackley. And I realized something during break, Mike. The hat on my head is as old as you are. Oh, my gosh. Because <laughs> I, I, this WMBS hat is from the old school when it I started working here ancient. many, many years ago. Yes. Yeah. So I, I went through. I'm, go, I'm doing my retro respects to the station. So the hat had its birthday last week, too? I'm Probably guessing. around the same okay. time. Come Very to good. Think you should have taken his hat out, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could have taken it to Connecticut and had brought a, it back Had a few again. beers with the hat. There you go. <laughs> Pretty good night. Yeah. A few beers in the hat. But, um, it's the one we... Look, I, could I, see I, the, I could see the Facebook pictures now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the hat whenever it's, they were it was made. I, I think, think there was like four of them made because I used to do remotes constantly when I was here. The first seven times or how many times it was, but um, <laughs> someone said it looked like it, it, you, they, we looked like a polka station hmm. because the hat looked like uh, it was red and white with the red lettering. It looks like a polka hat. Oh I don't wow! Know why? But oh. what, so our ratings probably just shot through the roof. You say polka? polka. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend TJ Salonic, who never mind. <laughs> Polka. Everyone's making calls. Turn on WMBS. Anyway, <laughs> we got. We, hey, my son can play the accordion now. Maybe we'll bring him we in. We need do it. Background we music. need that. So, we're gonna start our tomatoes here. I have some yellow tomatoes. These are nice little kind of plum-sized yellow yeah, tomatoes. Okay, maybe Bill's orange tomatoes. Okay. They're they're yellow tomatoes. They're a little sweeter than red ones, um, which I like. Okay. And they're just they give it a, a little more color. I think a little. More more springy feel, if you will. So we're going to take one of these little bad boys here. Now, we, we, we've talked about this before, about presentation uh-huh. of food. Why, I mean, are you worried about how it looks, or are you more worried about how I mean, it tastes? I, well, both. I mean, I I can't separate the two just because of where I come from okay. and my training. I mean, I'm always thinking, you know, what's going to make it look better at the same time. You, you can't compromise taste. Taste is obviously the most important thing. Right. But if there's a way that you can still keep the integrity and make it taste just as good, but at the same time make it look a little better, why not? I mean, that makes sense. You know? I was just curious about that. So we're going to take, I just sliced it thinly. I'm going to put this in the bowl here. Because of all the cooking shows you watch on TV, a lot of times it seems like they're more worried about appearance than they are the actual taste of the food. Yeah, some are. I mean, it, it just depends. It depends on who it is and where the recipe really comes from. See, because I, if you notice, a lot of these home, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, cooks on TV or the people you see cooking on TV that aren't professionally trained, right? They don't go that route. Right. They just go easy, simple. Okay. Whatever. But most of the people that are trained, it, because wait, it's you're just on so TV. Important. What are you talking about? Yeah. Well, I'm, there's an exception <laughs> to every rule. I'm gonna add a little olive oil to these tomatoes. And I have a nice large basil leaf here. I'm just going to give it a rough chop, and I'm going to add some basil to them, fresh basil, which goes really well with tomatoes, believe it or not. So when you bought the basil this week, did someone else come up and stop you? No, basil's basil's a little more uh, accepted in the herb world. Okay, so just give it a rough chop. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be anything amazing, just so you get that flavor in there. And then I'm just going to hit it with a little sea salt okay. and a little fresh cracked black that pepper. That basil smells really good. Oh, I love basil. I mean, it really does. And I could actually just eat these tomatoes just like this and be completely well, satisfied. My, the thing is, you mentioned that. My wife does that. Yeah, it's delicious. That's, yeah, she does that. And one thing we're going to have to do here come come summer when it's peak tomato season, we're going to have to make tomato sandwiches because I love tomato sandwiches. You may have to convince me on that one. I, okay. I'll have to. Yeah. I can do that. That was another one of my favorite snacks. Nice fresh tomatoes, some nice hearty bread, and some mayonnaise, some butter. Oh. The burger, I, I forgot to tell you, I went to Red Robin last week. Mm-hmm. I had the black and blue burger there because we were talking about um, the type of grilled cheese sandwich I would eat, which would be the uh, blue cheese and bacon uh-huh. sandwich. And I, I was so hungry for it after I got there. It was amazing. It looks good. I saw the I mean, picture on Facebook. Really yeah, I'm, I'm food blogging now. I'm taking pictures of what I eat before I eat it. How That's bad good. is you, it? You're one of those guys now? I, <laughs> I don't do it on Instagram. Okay. I will say that. <laughs> Why? I don't get Instagram. I don't understand the Instagram's purpose of Instagram's like it. a conduit. It p- pushes pictures to the other networks. But uh, you said you only want to post once. You post I, once You there. know what? Yeah, I guess you so made I'm gonna cut right. it. We're going to cut our bread. Again, this is the, an olive oil loaf you can buy at the local supermarket, but feel free to use any bread you like. So you is like that sourdough. flour on top, or what is it? Yeah, it's okay. a little bit of flour they, when they baked it. 
And it is the same bread that we used when we made our muffalad, muffaletta, if you listen to that episode. And if you didn't, you can listen to it at justcookit.net. And Bill DeFabio is still talking about that sandwich. Mm -hmm. That's good. The more buzz, the better, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, so we get a couple slices of this bread cut. Mike, you want a piece of bread? Oh, I'm not going to turn that yeah. down. <laughs> I'm starving. <Thank> you. <laughs> Don't Toss you eat in. before you come in? Yeah, like 3 a.m. Oh, okay. Okay, so we got our bread cut. Next thing we're going to do. you got butter it. Yes, sir. We've got some butter here. And again, much like we did last week, and again with grilled cheese sandwiches, Use real butter. Yeah, I mean, don't please. Go to fake stuff. Yeah, the, that I can't believe it's not whatever stuff in the the <laughs> vegetable oil mixes or whatever. The it, country crock. And yeah, it, it just it, number one, it doesn't taste as good. That's first and foremost. And number two, even if you want to argue with me, yeah. that's just fine and say it does taste as good. It doesn't work as well no, as far as browning goes. Because then it also falls apart in the skillet. Yep. And you always want to butter your bread, not the skillet. It'll give you a much more even browning, and it makes sure that the uh, the entire I slice know, of bread is okay, cooked. You're ready for this one, Mario. I know people that eat organic, yep. but they still use tub tub margarine. That's kind of counterintuitive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, why would you waste the time? I mean, yeah. If you're going all one way, go all way. Yeah, it's like I'm going to quit drinking, but I, I'm i going to quit drinking, but I still like beer. Yeah. Makes <laughs> it okay. Yeah. Mike Sackley. That's what Mike did, isn't it? I'll is never it? quit. That's oh, the issue. Okay. <laughs> Your I'm, parents I'm, must be so proud. Oh, I'm never <laughs> wonderfully proud of that. I'm glad you're just open I made and a name for myself, it. yes. So, what I'm going to do now. That's why they're in Arizona and he's not. After I bought it. <clears throat> I was exiled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exiled to Pennsylvania. After I bought the bread on the opposite side I'm gonna spread it with a nice layer of our mustard aioli just make sure that you don't uh, brown it on the other the wrong side yeah right? don't do that that would be bad hey wait there's no garlic this week no garlic no garlic you can add garlic to the spread if you like to the mayonnaise I just you know I'm trying to keep it simple, simple. I'm trying to keep it fun I'm trying to keep it delicious Trying to keep it Mike Sackley approved. As we sit here and watch him butter okay. or uh, spread spread. So we got it. our spread on it. Okay. Next thing is, and again with grilled cheese sandwiches, a great tip is no matter what cheese you're using, yeah. run it over a box grater and shred it. Right. It makes it melt so much easier. Makes it much more evenly. It makes it more consistent. Yep. Yeah. So we're gonna take it. And I think I actually have a little extra cheese here. Well, this this. That's okay. What do we say make, constitutes a grilled cheese sandwich? How many ounces? Um, two ounces. Two ounces is the general. So you have two and a half there. Yeah. Yeah, I have roughly two and a half, maybe a little more than that. But so even though this is a BLT, it has two and a half ounces of cheese, which constitutes a grilled cheese mm -hmm. sandwich. Yes. Loopholes. And did you know, according to a food historian, as I was doing my research this week, I found this out. The BLT yes. is the second most popular sandwich in America. What's the number to one? To the ham and cheese. Hmm. That makes sense. And it is the most popular in the UK. I wouldn't have known that. Mm-hmm. They can get bacon eh? in the UK. Apparently, okay. <laughs> it's not the Canadian bacon, the slap, or the. Uh... I, I think they can probably get whatever they like. <laughs> okay, so now we got our sandwich ready. We put our cheese. We put our mustard spread. We put our cheese on it. Our smoked mozzarella. We're gonna go right in our pan. Okay. Again, open faced. Turn our heat up a little bit on our pan. And we didn't remove the bacon fat. No, you did not. Why? 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 Why well, would I? Exactly. It makes it that much better. So we're gonna that, start that sandwich last week to, was to write home about. I mean, oh, that, was, that was actually very good. Well, Unfortunately, Mike wasn't here. <laughs> I was gonna say. I wonder what Mike thought about it. Yeah. Well, I was thinking other things at that time in the morning. I know Jim. Week. I know Jim had uh, kind words about it because he That's enjoyed good. it too. So. Mm -hmm. It was very good. George von Benke didn't want to try it, but hey. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. George, we're trying to set up a time for George to come cook on our show. He's got some recipes he wants to make. Um, what, 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 what is it? Uh, Swiss steak. Yeah. He wants to make. We're going to have to do that very soon for him. He's been asking for it. Yep. So we got our sandwich browning. Now what we're going to do is... Just to catch you up, once this sandwich gets starts to golden brown on, on the uh, on the bottom, we're gonna add our tomatoes, we're gonna add our bacon, and right. I have some lettuce here. Okay? okay. Now this lettuce, traditionally a BLT is made with iceberg. Okay. Excuse me. But this is Boston bib. Okay. Boston bib. Yeah, it's like a butter lettuce. So it um it's it's a little softer, it's a little buttery, it's a little richer. It doesn't have as much of a crunch as iceberg, which I'm okay with because I like the lighter okay. texture and flavor. Um 
If I wasn't using peppered bacon, my first instinct was to go with arugula. Arugula. But it's a little pepperier. <coughs> okay. So since I decided to use peppered bacon, I thought too much of the pepperiness would, would be, be overkill. Too much. So I decided to go with the peppered bacon and the Boston bib okay. as opposed to the arugula. But again, do what you like. If you like if you like arugula, use that. If you like iceberg, use that. Um, you can even use just regular mixed greens on your sandwich, as long as there's a lettuce, because it wouldn't be a BLT. It would just be a BT. Yeah, that's right. Now, the question for you is... Um they talk about iceberg lettuce, that there's really no nutritional value because it's basically water? Yeah, it's just water. Okay, but this more has a more of a nutritional um, value yeah, to this it? Yeah, this has more nutritional value to it. Um, not not a ton, but it does have more. And you want to make sure when you buy this when you buy this lettuce, you can see how it's like a head. Yeah. You want to make sure you clean it. And the proper way to clean it is you want to take off any leaves that are kind of falling off the outside and discard those. And then you want to take it and you want to put it in a bowl like this or a larger bowl upside down okay and then you want to fill the bowl with water okay okay so the point where it's covered the so you need a larger bowl than right this, but to the point where it's covered because what's going to happen is there can be some sand or some silt or some dirt down inside the right, right 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 so if you have it submerged in water upside down that sand is going to come out release okay? it and, and then when you take it out you kind of give it a twist like this and you shake off the excess water and then all that sand and debris is left in the bucket or in the bowl and you have your clean now, lettuce is that organic lettuce no <laughs> Oh, you're letting it's me down. It's hard to find. It's hard you're to find some of this down stuff today. It's hard to find some of this stuff organic. Your mother not letting you down. I'm going to be disowned. Your just mother you know. just turned the radio down when she heard that. I'm sure she did. <laughs> but yeah, if you can use, you can buy organic mix and use that. <laughs> Boston bib at the local supermarket's a little difficult to find organic. And our bread's just about ready. It smells good. It really does. So I'm gonna the smell of the heat. bacon grease and butter is that that that, that <laughs> one of those smells Nothing from my childhood at my grandmother's house. I'm I mean, gonna add honestly. our tomatoes and leave our basil and such on there. Okay. It does look very appealing. As he starts to decorate it. Okay. There you go. Tomatoes. No, no, we don't want to waste this basil, do we? No, I wouldn't waste the basil. Okay, you want to add some bacon to it? Oh, the top? I get to add the bacon. Now, are we doing the cross for yeah, the, go Easter, with the, cross. the Easter significance, or how do we want to do that? Oh, what side do I have to put the bacon on? Put it on the same side. Okay. I didn't do know. Do it however you want. If you want to do crisscross, do crisscross. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to take our lettuce here, right on top of there. And I like a little extra lettuce, so I'm going to use two. A little bit of crunch. Now we got to give it the whole flip. Already? Wow. Looks excellent. Oh, yeah, we're oh, very it's close. Done. It's done. So we'll just give it the little flip right on top of there. And don't push down. Now, don't push down too much. You don't want to smash it you all smash up. smash it all So now we'll just let this kind of just... Let it warm. Uh huh. Now that's what a sandwich is supposed to look like. Oh yeah, this is good I stuff. I mean, really, it is. I'll give it a little tough flip on this side, just to. So there you go. So you have your nice uh, and golden brown on the outside. We got all our delicious stuff on the inside. We got our bacon. We got our lettuce. We got our marinated tomatoes. We got our smoked mozzarella. Mm -hmm. And you also have some. Magic. Oh, yes. I have from the magic, magic bag. The magic elixir, as I have our friends from Shiner. As, uh, I, as Mike. <laughs> as I have the white hair, pale ale, or the premium um, from our friends in Shiner, Texas. And uh, we'll, we'll take that. Now, which one? Would you go with a more of a, uh, a pale ale, or would you go with more of a, I don't want to say standard, but more of a traditional you could really go either. I like pale. You have to really like a pale ale right. to, to pair it. I personally do. You do. Pale ales are a little, um, how would you describe them, Mike? They're a little more, I don't want to say tart, but they're, they're hoppy. They're, yeah. Yes. They're much different. Much hoppier. They're very hoppy. Yeah. They're much hoppier than, than tr the traditional beers that you're used to, which gives it that kind of tart, bitter flavor, which I personally enjoy. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a taste for it. You can't, you know, it's there, not There, there are things. some I can do. There's some, though, I just can't do. Really? It mm -hmm. just depends on, the, I think, the type of of it. I've tried to get more into it, though. Cause, so I think in honor of Easter, we go with the wild hare. I agree. Yeah, and, Let's and do it. Because uh -huh. it is hoppy. And I think, you know, for a sandwich like this, you don't want a beer that's very assertive. I wouldn't drink, like, a real dark beer just because... 
the beer and the pot the pungency the potency of the beer would overshadow the sandwich this is kind of a even though it's got like the smoked cheese and the bacon it's kind of a summery springy lighter right. sandwich you know you wouldn't eat this in the winter time this isn't like a real hearty it's something that could really that would really stand up mm -hmm. to a more intense beer so uh, probably your lighter variety like your pale ale would be great because it gives it would offset it with that with that hoppiness um <laughs> i love hoppiness hoppiness <laughs> and it's <laughs> and it's so fitting that it's called wild hair with the right. hoppiness <laughs> <laughs> and when we say wild hair, that's H A R E, like the rabbit. Yeah, hair. this is not planned. Trust me. I but, found out this morning what we were making when I posted on Facebook asking what we were making. That's how much we can. Well, we do communicate. We just not this about week. the not about the details. Yeah, this week this week the show. Been, this week's been crazy with the yeah. holiday coming up. Oh yeah. I, I'm zooming out of here to go to an Easter egg hunt as soon as I'm done. Are you going to actually participate in the hunt? Uh, no, um, I'm actually going to hide the eggs if I <laughs> if I get there in time. Bill, how's Bill Alexander hide eggs? You think? Which is really no hard. one will find any eggs. Which is really hard to find eggs in an open field. It's not that difficult, kids. <laughs> Trust me, it's not that hard. <laughs> He's gonna hide the eggs and like they'll but all be in his car. I've, <laughs> you know, I've tried to do that and I get yelled at every time. So no, it no kids work. found any eggs, but Bill's got all this candy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we got our sandwich made here. I'm gonna let it rest just for a few minutes. You want to take a picture yep. of this? And yeah, let's take tweet a picture. it out, and we have our final break to take. And we'll take our break because I. Uh, take the t tweet and again we're trying to convince uh, we would like you to uh Look at that. Everything goes quiet. The we'd like, photography yeah, because uh, yeah, I can't talk and take pictures at the same time. Um, we'd like to convince Jim Morgan to tweet on Twitter. <laughs> yes. And we're that on that. Is That's our, never going to happen. Our, oh, wait, we, we have faith. We're working I'm on it. I'm not as faithful as we, you we have, We're, we're going to start the Jim Morgan on Twitter campaign. Yes. So everyone call in when Jim's on the air. <laughs> and tell him he needs to be on Twitter. And, and you can help him make up his own handle. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's the CB of the uh, the CBs of the new, new millennium. Mm -hmm. it, it, like when we were in the 70s, we all had our own CBs and we had our own handles and everything else. But now it's Twitter. I don't I had, know. I don't know. I had a thought I wanted to mention before we went to break. But oh, oh. <laughs> as I think out loud, I do that quite often. Here's um, just to mention, just to recap, this past week... On Thursday, I believe it was. Yes, Thursday. Yeah. My column came out in the Herald Standard. Yes, and we actually that. featured the same sandwich we made on Just Cook It Radio last week. So that comes included with a video. So go to heraldstandard.com and check out the video. Or you can go to justcookit.net and click on there's links right on the on the uh, blog post that I, that I posted about that. So you can actually watch the sandwich that you heard made last week. And you can also go to justcookit.tv <laughs> and watch us make it live in studio. So you got two different... Two different versions. Yeah. One with all the banter and one without the banner. Yeah, so you pick you pick whichever whichever works for you. But we have it your way. It's like uh, like that Burger place. King. <laughs> yeah. So let's take our final break. When we come back, we're going to eat our sandwich. We're going to drink some of this beer from the magical Bill Alexander's magical beer bag. Yes, that's a good. That's a good. I like that brand. That, branding. You know what? Right there. That's an excellent. That's an excellent <laughs> way. We need to start doing that. Bill if Alexander. you'd like to supply us with any type of beer for the <laughs> yeah. magical beer bag, let us know. Yes. Um, so we're going to come that's back. Excellent. We're try our sandwich. We're going to drink our beer from, uh, from the magical sample or beer from the magical beer bag. And we'll take your calls if anyone wants to call in at 855 590 0590. So don't touch that radio dial. More Just Cook It on the way right after these messages on the Just Cook It radio network. Phil Giannetti Motors at 656 National Pike East in Brownsville is a proud sponsor of programming on FCTV. Phil Giannetti Motors providing quality vehicles for 45 years. If you're looking for a quality pre owned vehicle, Give Phil Giannetti's a call at 724-785-6800 or stop by their website, philgiannettimotors.com. Welcome back to Just Cook It Radio here on the Just Cook It Radio Network and also at JustCookIt.tv and JustCookIt.net and JustCookItRadio.com. And let's see, where else? <laughs> How many more places are we? 
We're everywhere. All you have to do is look. There's no excuse for not being for not being able to find us. That's that's exactly right. And actually, if you you see us out and about, because Mario got stopped the other day at the big barn, and uh, said, "Hey, we watch you on TV." <laughs> nice. Out in the boot. Out in the boot. This is the Canadian version. Yes. So you're not allowed back in Canada, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're gonna come get me. <laughs> so, let's see here. We're gonna cut our sandwich here. So we can all enjoy it. Looks very appetizing. I hope it tastes good. Yep. And again, when you're cutting a sandwich like this, let your knife do the work. Don't press down. If it takes a few extra saws, sawing motions, no problem. Just let your knife do the work. That way, it doesn't. This is where you need one of those electric knives. <laughs> the Alton Brown electric <laughs> knife. That way, it doesn't see, it doesn't spread the filling everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. And I know Mike's hungry. Um, Mike, I'm, did you get I'm us, did you get us right cups now. for the magical beer? Oh, I gotta go get them. For the magical brew bag. Mike's like, just pass the bottle. It'll yeah, be fine. that's fine. <laughs> that, looks, one. that looks amazing. Cut it into thirds. As, uh, as we, we, we sit here and uh, watch that. And you can call us at 855-590-0590, just to reiterate. Um, just the right amount of melting cheese right here. Oh, yeah. As you look at it. because good. I like when it, it kind of melts over the yeah. side there. And again, it looks very appetizing. So, so you can really, like I said, you can do this with almost any cheese combination sandwich. And if you're wondering about the cheese we use, the smoked mozzarella, like I said, I used applewood smoked. And you can find it in the cheese section of your local supermarket. But one thing I did this week, if you go to justcookit.net and you click on the recipe, yes. the picture on the post is of the of cheese. The cheese. That way, I did that on purpose. So I know it's not the most um, appealing image in the world because it's just the cheese in the package. But it but, gives you an idea. Yeah, I want you to see the exact cheese we used so you know what to look for when you're at the supermarket and that's an excellent idea to be able to do that because it gives you an understanding of what you're yes what you're looking at Mike returns yeah there's only one cup there Mike what's going yeah. on <laughs> just, just fill it up just. so we're gonna show our wild hair to celebrate Easter as Mike dives in what do you think Mike Ooh. awesome <laughs> is it it's really good yeah he doesn't want to. That's good when it's awesome. Because if it wasn't, we'd be wasting our time here. <laughs> isn't, we have, isn't that right? This beer smells really good, by the way. Yeah, it does. I can smell the hoppiness. It's Easter. You have to have hoppiness. Yes, from your wild hair. That's right. That's right. So I'm surprised. I kind of thought that today, beer. today's... Uh, Sandwich would have had to have something to do with the eggs. Yeah, I thought about that. Eggs. I thought about it, but you didn't do it. No, <laughs> I thought we'd enjoy this a little more. You know, with all the eastery stuff coming up tomorrow, yeah. and people are going to be egged out, so to speak, for the next few few days. Thank you. We might as well enjoy something else here. You know, the that bacon. Very the, good. Thank you. The bacon, the smoked cheese, the tomatoes. I mean. It's one of my favorites, and we have the wild hair beer to celebrate Easter. So the one question, we talked about this at Halloween. What is your favorite Easter candy? My favorite Easter yeah. candy? Hmm, that's a tough one. You know, I really enjoy the peanut butter eggs, the yes. Reese's peanut yes. butter eggs. That's because one of my favorites. Because they taste favorites. different than the peanut butter cups. They do. They're the pumpkins at Halloween yeah. and the eggs at Easter taste completely different. They taste different. Um, I, you know, I'm not a huge fan. They, they're everywhere, and I think they're a little overused. They're the marshmallow peeps. Yes. I know people love them. They're okay. Now, I'll have one or two. But now, I'm when not. you eat your peeps, do they have to be fresh, or do you let them sit out and get hard? I like them fresh. Okay. I like them soft and fresh. Personally, what do you like yours? Uh, Usually, I like them with a little, um, uh, a little crunch to them. Do they actually have the chocolate dipped peeps yes. now. Have you seen those? My wife, for an Easter craft a couple years ago, um, did them with white chocolate, mm. and that was really good. That sounds good. And, uh, speaking of candy, I got a, a text from my sister yesterday. Yes. She found, and she had to send me this picture, carrot cake flavored M&Ms. I saw that. Did you see those? I didn't get did to they try have them cream? yet. I wanted to know if they had cream cheese icing on them or not. I, that, would, <laughs> that would be delightful. We have a call in line right now. We go to Jeff. Jeff, how are you doing this morning? Oh, good, guys. How are you guys doing? Doing real well. 
Okay, I just called in to uh, comment. Uh, yeah. It sounded like a very good sandwich you was making today. It's an excellent sandwich. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm not a guy like that. Uh, I make uh, a lot of different sandwiches like that. Okay. You know, on the grill for breakfast. Stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be ham, it could be sausage, it could be whatever. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's always it's always good, it's always good stuff. You just got to balance your your ingredients right. Your salty to sweet to creamy yeah, and all right, that stuff. Right. And then uh, I've heard you saying uh, about the bacon grease, and uh, this is uh, I mean going back quite a while, but uh, I mean you never uh, discard your bacon grease. You keep it. Absolutely. And uh, which I still use it, you know what I mean? Uh, if you want to fry home fries or anything like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It just adds flavor. That 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 rendered fat, it's got that rich, smoky, delicious flavor to it. It I always, adds it to anything you cook. I always remember as a kid, my grandmother had a can that sat on the counter, and that's yeah. what it was. It right. was the rendered bacon fat. Right, that right. she would uh, go I to mean, whenever uh, she needed it. I mean, uh, I used to live uh, down south a long time ago, and uh, and they used to use lard. I mean, which yeah. is basically the same thing. But, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, lard. Lard is great too. <laughs> I, love, I love lard. I mean, <laughs> well, what I meant, what I meant to say was, uh, you were saying about the uh, a plate. You know, uh, say at a whatever. Uh, diner or something like that and they come out and they put you out a little bit of thing on a plate and you got a great big old dinner dinner plate and you only have uh, you know barely nothing there to eat right I mean I'm an avid uh, you know what I mean I got a smorgasbord you know what I mean (laughs) I like to eat you get the more bang for your buck right exactly I don't know if I said you pay uh, you know Top dollar for a little wee portion on a plate. Right. You know, I mean, when you can do better than that. You know. Well, that's a classic question: quality versus quantity. Well, yeah, and we've talked about that many a times so. too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I know you said uh, about the appearance of a, a certain meal, you know. Right. And I mean, it doesn't matter to me appearance. I mean, long <laughs> as long as it tastes <laughs> good. Long taste good. Well, the, feed me. Well, Jeff, we appreciate the call yes. this morning. Thank thanks you for, for calling and thanks for listening. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Okay. It's always great to hear from listeners. That's nice. It's, so, it's very nice. Great call. And we have about two minutes left, Mike. Right. He's such a stickler for the time. Yeah, I know. I mean, we could go over. I don't think George would mind. <laughs> As he busts through the door. <laughs> it's locked now. What are you talking about? <laughs> we were going to we were gonna when you were out. I found the key. Yeah. When you were out answering the phone, we were going to take over yeah. the studio for the day. You know what? I could just walk out, take the beer with me. Yeah, do, go. Go. You know. um, do a just cook a telethon. <laughs> <laughs> the sandwich um, is, is, is very good. It's amazing. And it, everything just goes. Yeah. Very well together, uh-huh. even the uh, the mustard mayonnaise sauce that yeah. you made, and it's easy to make. And I could actually see that mustard mayonnaise sauce on hamburgers, oh, yeah. on hot dogs, on pretty much anything that you'd use for a sandwich, other and, than peanut butter. And you know, it's the real deal because this is coming from the guy who never liked mayonnaise. I couldn't stand mayonnaise. So. I mean, really, it, it was one of those things where. And maybe it was because of how I used mayonnaise or anything else. I just didn't care for it. But now, when you mix it with something else as a base or something, it's 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 very nice. I, I really enjoy it now. He's converted. I've converted. He's a convert. Hey, my wife on is, this Easter Saturday. My wife wife is so happy that I'm doing this because now I eat what she makes. <laughs> she has a good way. You have to make this sandwich. It's very easy, very delicious. You can get the recipe at justcookit.net. If Mike Sackley likes it, everyone will like yes. it. I used to be a picky eater until I did the show. <laughs> Not as bad as. Matt Dowling. Oh, but we I have to work on yeah. him. Well, more stories about that next week. <laughs>
thank you for listening. We have more Just Cook It coming up for you next Saturday at 9 a.m. right here on the Just Cook It Radio Network. So be sure to tune in. More food, more fun, and we're going to make another version of grilled cheese. Sounds good. And everybody so, have a happy and yes, safe Easter. Very happy and safe Easter. For Bill Alexander and Mike Sackley, I'm Mario Pareca. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next Saturday. Happy Easter. This has been Just Cook It on the Just Cook It Radio Network. For listening to Just Cook It Radio with Mario Pereca and Bill Alexander. For more information on today's program, visit the Just Cook It website at justcookit.net. Here you can listen to the podcast or watch Mario and Bill cook today's recipe on Just Cook It TV. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please call 855-590-0590.